Hello everyone. Welcome back with another new topic on Microsoft Azure. In today's session, we are going to discuss about standard logic app workflows. So in this session, we will understand how to create workflows in standard logic app. What are the different type of workflows available in standard logic app? So in standard logic app, we have two types of workflows, stateful and stateless. A stateful workflow when you need to keep evaluate or refer to the data from prior events then create a stateful work so these workflow save and transfer all the inputs and output for each action as well as their states to external storage and allowing for post run analysis of the detail and history so if there are any disruption stateful workflow give excellent resilience. You can recreate interrupted runs from preserved state and repeat the workflow to complete after service and system have been restored. So stateful workflows can run for significantly longer period of time than a stateless process. Then what is stateless workflow? So when you don't want to maintain, you don't need to maintain or evaluate the data from prior events in external storage, then create a stateless workflow. So these workflows save all the inputs and outputs of each operation as well as their stages in memory rather than on disk. Because the run information and history are not kept in the external storage, a stateless workflow feature shorter run usually less than 5 minutes and it has the faster performance, quickly reaction time, higher throw output and lower running cost. So let's create our first standard logic app first uh, stateful workflows so for that we can go to the workflow section and you can click on add so here just give the workflow name first stateful first stateful wf and here we have to choose our state type Either we have to choose a stateful or stateless. So we are going to create a stateful. So we'll select a stateful. If you can see the definition, it says optimize for high reliability, ideal for process business transaction data. Let's click on create. So our workflow has been created. If you can see the status is enabled. If you want to disable that status, just select that and you can click on disable. If you want to delete, you can delete that as well. So our first stateful workflow has been created. In the same way, we can create our stateless workflow. You can go here. You can type the workflow name. First stateless workflow. Choose the state type and create on create. A stateless workflow has been successfully created. So what we can do, we can just go and open the first stateful workflow. So when you open that, you will have the options. You can see here, we have our logic app, standard logic app name. Trigger type, we have not yet designed anything. So it is trigger type is blank. We, we don't have our application inside setup. So it is coming, it is asking to set up the application inside. Our health status is healthy. Status is enabled, stateful. This state type is stateful. And we have a left panel. If you can see, we have a code view and we can have a designer view. So now what we can do and we can here we have run history and trigger history. So as of now we have not created anything. So everything is coming blank. So what we can do, we can just click on edit in designer, get started. And we will create a very simple workflow here, stateful workflow. So here, if you can see, choose an operation and here we will add our trigger. So for now we will just use the request trigger when request is received. We will go and action. We will take an action. We will send a response. And here we will go here to request and we will choose the response. So we will throw the response 200 and we will pass in the body your
request has been received okay this is the body that we will throw as a response let's create let's click on save so our workflow stateful first stateful workflow has been saved successfully okay now we'll go to the review if you go to the review now you will see our trigger type has changed to request and we will get the our workflow url so just copy this workflow url and we'll try to send one text message using this using this url to our external logic app so we'll open our postman tool to post this message okay so we have opened our postman tool we will go here we'll select the post we'll pass the value we'll pass the endpoint that we have copied from there and we'll paste it here okay in the body section we'll go just here select raw and here we are passing json okay so instead of json let's choose text and i'll pass this is test data okay and i'll click on send once you click on send message has been successfully processed and we have received this response your request has been received now let's go to the our workflow click on refresh we should have our run history here so if you can see we have our run id and we can open that run id to view our message message has been received you can see this is the test data that we have processed using our postman and in the response the response that we have sent to that request okay so this message has been received and our workflow is working fine so this is the way you can create your stateful workflow now let's go and have the same approach in stateless workflow we'll create the same process stateless workflow i'll go to this i'll go to the editor as operation in the trigger we will choose request we have selected the request okay and as an action we will just send the response back here i am passing response from stateless stateless workflow and i save this flow it is saving and status workflow has been saved let's go to the overview in the overview again if you are seeing the same workflow we have this endpoint we have this endpoint let's copy this endpoint we have copied this endpoint here if you can see we have another option called enable debug mode okay so before that let's let's trigger one sample message here to this endpoint and i am passing this request this is stateless test data i'll click on send and we have this response from stateless workflow fine let's go and refresh it so if you are seeing after refreshing we are not getting any run id information okay why we are not getting any run id information because if you remember previously i said state in a stateless workflow it is not maintaining any data okay whatever the information we are processing it is not maintaining if you want to debug that what you can do you can just enable this debug mode i enable this debug mode now let's go and send the message again message has been sent i'll go back let's refresh this message this time if you can see we are able to see the run id we are able to see the message okay we have the request this is a stateless test data and the response response from stateless workflow in this manner we can create our standard logic app and this is the difference of the stateless and stateful workflows in the standard logic app that's it about this video i hope you enjoyed to watching this video in case you have any query any suggestion please feel free to contact me